the false doctrines and the false teachings that are being propagated. Do you hear what I'm saying? Let that be a warning to all of you. It's a warning to me that we often poke fun at Eve for falling for Satan's trickery in the Garden of Eden, but little do we know the seduction in which Satan spoke. You got to remember, Eve was way beyond you and I in the area of morality. She was not only crafted by God himself, but she was not fallen in nature. And yet when Satan spoke to her, he was so convincing and so seductive in his ability to communicate lies that she fell for it. So in that, I pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, it's for good reason today that we have made sure that our junior high and high schoolers are in the sanctuary today. It's for good reason why we tackle this issue that is being discussed all around the world, and I marvel that so little of it is being covered in the news today, and yet talk shows are making fun of it right now and laughing over the course of the last 72 hours, and something's going on. And we'll ask you for your anointing. We are asking you, God, to give us discernment. We're asking you to shield us in our, in our mind and in the way that we think. And Father, quite frankly, we've all read and studied the Bible, some more than others, but be that as it may, the challenge to my heart today is, I'm guilty, Lord, it turns out, as you well know, of assuming that deception would come wrapped with a label on it. Just like something comes to the front door and says fragile, or this side up. And that's not how the demonic world works. What is false is not going to arrive on our computer screen, or in a book, or on TV, or whatever means by whatever medium, labeled, this is deceptive material, not for all viewers, not for all readers. The exact opposite is true. So Father God, I pray that you'd give us a stomach for this today, as the world seems to be delighting in eating it up. And may we not fall victim to the lies in which the world loves to gravitate toward we pray in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. So, um, big stuff today, serious things. And as I prayed, we, we did make it a, uh, an important thing all day today that our youth ministry be here in the main sanctuary. I didn't want anything lost in, so to speak, translation, translation by location. They could be in their rooms. They, they normally, when they do join us, which is rare, but when they do join us, they join us remotely. Uh, meaning that the, it, the main sanctuary is broadcast into their room. But in that, there's a loss of atmosphere. There's a loss of presence. Just like viewing a service online is not the same as being here in person. You guys all know that. We're looking at a message these next two weeks titled, and I must confess, I've stolen it from myself. It is a book that's coming out uh, pretty soon by Harvest House Publishers this spring, but it's uh, the title, uh, In the Days of Deception. Will you write that down, please? Days, D-A-Z-E, In the Days of Deception. We're, uh, I'm going to submit to you today that uh, we're living right now in the days of deception. I love how uh, Brittany uh, skewed the graphic like this, days. I mean, that just the word days right there suggests to you that you just got hit upside the head, and things are not in focus. That's for good reason. It is very clear that you and I are living in the times and the age that the Bible warns about regarding deception. Some of us don't want to hear about this, and it is true. Today and next Sunday, if you want to have a warm and fuzzy experience, do not come to this church. If you want to take Bible truth and apply it to what's going on in the world around us, then this is going to be the place to be. I do not know how long YouTube or Facebook will carry this broadcast as they've already proven not to be fans of such controversial issues as these. 
But I want to have you be thinking this way before we get into this. And all of this is introduction at this point. I am very fond of the picture in my mind's eye. And now I'm old school. Meaning that um, in my day, we either walked to school or a bus picked us up at a particular predetermined spot. And if you didn't walk to school, which can you believe that? I remember walking to school. I was a little kid. It was totally safe to walk to school. Uh, but, um, but if you got picked up in a bus, your mom or your dad or somebody, or you just walked to the spot where the bus came. But in my mind's eye, I remember this. I remember, uh, and again, please don't take this in any other woke way, okay? But... Back in my day, dads got up and went to work, and frankly, moms had the harder job. (laughs) And that was raising brats like me. (laughs) And I remember my mom making me be dressed for the weather for the day, cold or warm. She would be straightening my collar, making sure my buttons are buttoned in order, and that there was no food hanging from my mouth or my teeth. That's what moms do. Listen, moms do that. This is not a a sexist statement. Moms do it. They need to do it. They need to keep on doing it because why? Dads don't care. (laughs) Dads will send send their kid off to a photo shoot with a pork chop hanging from their mouth. (laughs) Dads just don't care. You look fine to me. Go. So mom will be preening and, and, and making it all right. And while she's doing this to you, she's giving you the day-to-day, everyday rundown. Don't get in trouble. Do you hear me? <laughs> Stay away from strangers. Don't get into any fights. And don't miss the bus. <laughs> and then she turns you around and scoots you off in the direction of the school or the bus. What was mom doing? Mom was seeing ready always that you were ready and prepared for the day that was ahead of you. And she gave you guidance as how to act and how not to act. And the Bible throughout all of the biblical record from Genesis on, you could sum it up by saying that God has been speaking to his people about what to Uh, expect and what not to expect, uh, what to be ready for, and uh, what to be doing in light of such revelations. And overwhelmingly, you know from the Old Testament that when the Bible says, when God says, if a prophet comes to town and speaks falsehood, kill him. You see, that's a little extreme. It's not extreme if you realize what's at stake. And so the Old Testament exercised uh, a, a, a watchful ministry over a community if a false prophet came to town because the Bible says a false prophet would lead someone astray. That is, they would really capture their soul and lead them away from the presence of God, from the knowledge of God. And so the Bible says, take them out. Now, in the New Testament, we do not take them out. The Bible says, Jesus says, I'll take take care of that myself because it's regarding my church. I want to do that. I'll do that. What you're to do in in the New Testament era is expose them. That's what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to expose the evil, the false, and what is being perpetrated in what is called church in some cases and what might even be a church But it is drifting. And so this is a very, very important uh, next couple of weeks that you and I are going to be looking at. I want you to mark down this because it is key. If we're talking about the days of deception, how do you get dazed? How do you get smacked, as it were, upside the head? And you're not seeing things right. If you really get uh, a nasty concussion, uh, even your, your vision is blurred and you can't make things out clearly. There's a lot of people today that cannot make things out clearly in light of the stuff that's going on. Even now, they still don't see it. What's going on? I want to submit to you that what is going on is what the Bible has warned about for thousands of years. 
And I want you to write down this very important definition. We're going to be talking about deception, being deceived, dazed. So deceived, the Greek word there, it means whatever causes you to wander. You think about that for a moment. Whatever it is that causes you to wander, that is off the path, off the trail, to go astray, to be led away, the word means to become misguided. It's something that is done willingly, everybody. And I'm going to be challenging you, I think, over and over again uh, this morning. Are you listening? I'm going to say, uh, yeah, I, I do that anyway, but I'm going to extra, I think, think about it because it is so important to watch out that when somebody says, publishes, announces, shows, uh, displays something that causes you to entertain wandering away from Jesus, watch, you don't have to stop going to church to wander away from Jesus. All you have to do is start to entertain a false reality or a false teaching regarding Scripture and who God is. This is very important. We must fight our temptations to be emotionally directed in our theology based upon what we feel. Well, I feel like this. I don't think that's fair. I don't really like that. Uh, this is what my friends believe. All of a sudden in our world of humanism, really it is, where there are no absolutes anymore. And I think that's by design. But deception, the world would say, no, 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 there is no deception. That's just what you believe, and it's different than what somebody else believes, and you can't judge them. You're being mean if you say deception or deceived. Am I right? Am I you hearing me? If you say you're deceived on this issue, you'll get fired upon because they have the right uh, to believe what they believe in, and who are you to judge them? Here's the problem. Let's be honest. If we were Christians uh, that didn't love people, we would be completely fine in letting you live on in your lie. We're not trying to convince you to join our team. When we uh, refute what you say in rebuttal, we are as actually asking you, you better think this through because God says something different. It's very, very important. And so over and over again, we are warned about deception. And in these last couple of weeks, it has exploded on the world scene. And yet, I'm telling you right now, because I'm watching this, I'm monitoring this, all around America, there are very few conversations taking place, but what happened in America a few weeks ago has launched an international firestorm of dialogue. And interestingly enough, media groups are trying to suppress it while other media groups are releasing it. So that's good. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about what I believe is some form of a bizarre unleashing of demonic activity. Something has happened in these last few weeks to announce, now they don't say it this way, to announce what Jesus warned about and what the prophets warned about just prior to the advent of the Antichrist, the tribulation period, and then ultimately the second coming of Christ to establish his kingdom. There is a demonic ministry, I'll put it, mission that is now going public. And again, I'm going to ask you to be respectful and not laugh. I I, 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 you might be nervous, you know, when people get nervous, they start to laugh because they don't know what to do. Just control yourself <laughs> because Jesus says this is no laughing matter. So let's start, let's get, let's get the potential laugh out now and be done with it. Uh, put your eyes to the screen on this. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. And now that UFOs are being taken more seriously, more people are coming forward with their own sightings. Shaquille O'Neal told Jimmy Kimmel he's certain he's seen a UFO. With all the lights and it was spinning and it just 
and took off and everything happened in less than five seconds and we all looked at each other and was like and I know that it was a UFO. I don't care what anybody says. You never told anybody about that? Nope, you're the first person I told because I don't want people to think I'm crazy. But right, right, I'm right. Like, oh, okay. Um, that's probably a good summation of what people feel or think like, you know, when... But why did I show Barack Obama? Why did I show Shaquille O'Neal? Because these are uh, names that people know. And I wanted to start with that. In Matthew chapter 24, I'm going to ask all of you to stand. I'm going to read uh, to you. You guys can all stand if you would in respect to the word of God, Matthew 24. I'm going to read Matthew 24. I'm going to read Mark 13 and Luke 21, sections of these scriptures. And uh, the context is this. We're living in an age of deception. Listen, I believe it's demonic in nature. And for the next two weeks, I'm going to go about proving that there are elements that make it very clear it's demonic. The question you ought to be asking is, is that true? Why is it happening now? And are there other things that are going on in our world that align with the warnings of the Bible that such things would happen at the near return of Christ? It's quite fascinating. Matthew chapter 24, I'll read it all. When Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came, up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. He's talking about the temple. And now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And... Of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. I want you to think about that. That was his first warning. Jesus, if you're talking about the end of the world, what's the most important thing you can tell us? Don't be deceived. Mark's gospel. Mark 13, verse 1. Then as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, See what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Verse 3, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all of these things will be fulfilled? And Jesus answered them, began to say, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my, and the word is authority, many will come in my authority, or speaking with authority, as Messiah, or as Christ, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. Jesus promises mass global deception in the last days. Do you guys all see that? And this is all, by the way, relating to the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus said it's all going to come crashing down, which happened in 70 AD. Long after Christ had went back to heaven in 70 AD, the Roman Empire under General Titus destroyed the temple. You can read about that in all facets of history, secular and religious as well. Now Luke 21, verse 5. Then some spoke of the temple how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations. Jesus said to them, These things which you see, the days will come in which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. So they asked him, saying, Teacher, when will these things be? What will be, uh, what's, what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? And Jesus said to them for the third time, in three gospels, take heed that no one or you or no one deceives you, or that you are not deceived. Deception. Again, Father, we pray that you'd give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And today, may every single one of us have a higher view of Scripture than when we walked in this morning. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus also announced in Luke 21, 25, and there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and on earth distress among nations. 
As I think about this message today, I want you guys to be very uh, aware of the fact that um, taking uh, such uh, a message on is highly threatening to any pastor's career. Uh, for example, if, if, uh, if I were a celebrity pastor, I wouldn't be taking this topic on. Why? Because you would be labeled as a lunatic, or you would be labeled as one that's interpreting the Bible in a certain way, and that should cause concern. Um, you should leave that kind of stuff alone. And you know what? I understand that counsel, and that's, that's good counsel, um, until deception actually shows its face. Until tomorrow, you've got to go and meet up with your co-workers and someone in the cubicle is going to ask you, hey, what's going on? Did you see the thing on the news? Did you see what NBC aired? Did you see what happened uh, in uh, France uh, News uh, t Channel 24? Did you see that? And listen, if I don't give you the answers from the Bible about what's happening today, then you ought to just ought to stay home and, and go and, and, or go play volleyball or something. This is very serious stuff because even, listen, even if what's being seen in the world is not true, when the world asks you about it, you better have the answer. You ought to be able to tell them it's not true. And here's the reason why. Or it may be happening, but here's the reason why it's happening. And here's what it is. Are you hearing me, people? This is very, very important. So as I look at this, as I look at my notes, I want to be careful I don't leave anything out that is very, very important. And by the way, the things I'm going to be showing you, every single one of them are public. I don't have a hotline to anybody. I don't have any kind of inroads. I don't have a bat phone. These are things that are all available uh, out there for you to look and to study. But um, it, it's, it's obviously my calling uh, to teach you the Bible. And uh, that's what we must do. But I do believe that we are living in the time or the age uh, of deception, in the days of deception. Uh, today, I'm going to, I hope, anyway, I wrote myself a note. Do not be dramatic and don't be in any way hyperbolic. Uh, <laughs> because the truth about these things, if you, if you believe it or not, are shocking enough. I don't need to get your attention is what I'm saying. The challenge today is, what I said earlier is, don't answer, but do you believe that Jesus was correct in saying deception is coming to the world, increasingly so more in the last days? If the answer to that is, yes, I believe my Bible, I believe Jesus, then the next question is, what form or what depth of deception was Jesus talking about? That's a good question. Just remember this. Jesus said that deception will be so great coming upon this earth, that if it were possible, my own very elect, my own children, my own church, my own believers of any age, from the day of Pentecost to the end of the tribulation period, in the tribulation saints, the church believers to the tribulation believers, he said if it were possible, they would be deceived. Listen, none of, you have ex none of us have experienced a level of deception that is forthcoming, ladies and gentlemen, according to Jesus. That means we need to be ready, that you need to believe your Bible, and you need to know why you believe your Bible. You're going to be hearing things today and next week that I quote one of our staff members who I had review it, said back to me, wow. I just got done listening to this guy's lecture. If I were not a Christian, I would believe what that guy said. Because the guy answers the questions that man has, but he leaves God out. And he inserts some other type of deliverer. In a poll, and I'll try to have it for you next week, in a poll that was asked just three days ago, do you believe in God or do you believe in aliens? The overwhelming amount was, I believe in aliens more than I believe in God. Yes. Amazing. I'm not, listen, I'm not asking you to believe it. Just asking you to hear it. I'm asking you to consider this for your own protection. 
We're living in the days of deception. And if you and I do not know the truth, you're going to fall prone, fall victim to it. Number one, in the days of deception, what does every Christ follower know for sure? What does every Christ follower know for sure? You need to write that down. It's this, that the church age at this moment in world history is nearing its end regarding its godly call. In other words, we're 2,000 years down the road from the day of Pentecost. We know that as a fact. We also know this, that the world is now able to communicate instantly in real time. That was referred to in the Bible. We know that the Bible says in the last days before the Antichrist is revealed, there's going to be an, uh, an age where a man will want to be governed under one ruling system. Uh, the Bible talks about that. We know that once the Antichrist comes onto the world scene, he will take advantage of something that is already in existence. He's going to request a or demand a prefix number ahead of the number you do business with. Think about this. For seven years, according to the Bible, it looks as though that people are going to be trading, not with money, but with numbers. You will have a cashless system. He's going to come and demand that you have a a preface to that number. Like some of you live in uh, the 951 area code, 909-949-213-310 area code. Those area codes are prefixes to your phone number. Remember that. When the Antichrist comes on the scene, he's going to say, go ahead and keep your number, your banking number, we'll just call it that, but to uh, make sure that everything's on the same page and we all swear allegiance, because by the way, every tyrant demands people swear allegiance to them, he's just going to say, just accept my number, just accept my mark, just accept this image, and oh, it just so happens that what they all have in common is the numbers 666 is in your Bible. Having said that, there are so many things that we are now at the time in the age of technology where such things can happen, if not, are already happening. You've already re received warnings in your bank statements that you are falling under a category. You and I are being graded. I'm being graded. I've got these, these uh, in the mail. My ESG rating. You need to read the fine print to your bank statements and your credit card statements when you get them. I know you don't. Who does? I mean, attorneys write them in such a way to bore you stiff that by the time you get to the important stuff, you're, you're too tired to keep reading. But you have an ESG rating that is a global rating agreed on by globalists that announces what is your particular purchase style, belief system, what do you spend your money on? Where do you go? What's your favorite food? Where, where, where are your, do you tithe or do you give to this or that? All of these things are now being monitored. This is all part of moving toward a grand deception in the last days. It's not going to happen overnight. It's been happening like Satan loves to do in your life and mine and in the world very gradually so that you don't wake up to it. I was reading again. Uh, I encourage everybody to read this. It's not a Christian book, but it's The Art of War. Have you ever, anybody? Yeah. By uh, Sun Tzu, you ought to read it, The Art of War. It's, <laughs> this guy said, when, when you are far from your enemy, make him think you're close. And when you're close to your enemy, make him think you're far away. When you're very strong, make him think you're very weak. And when you're very weak, make him think you're very strong. When you're launching a war against him, make him think that you are not launching a war against him. It's a, it's a war tactic. And I'm submitting to you today that there's issues going on in our world that have almost lulled us into a sleep. And I think all of a sudden now, so much of Hollywood over its decades regarding UFO type of conversations, alien visitations, were just part of getting things to be somewhat acceptable, even, even if terrifying. There's something bizarre about the human nature that loves terrifying. Uh, I mean, I don't. I'm a pastor. I see it enough. I'd like boredom. Uh, why doesn't somebody do a movie on boredom? I would go. But, uh, you know, people go, oh, let's go to this movie to scare you. 
I don't need to do that. I, I, live, I live that life every, every day. Um, so the, the thing is this, is um, I think we've been conditioned. So when people like Barack Obama or Shaquille O'Neal say what they say, did that shock you? Did it like, oh my gosh. No, you just rolled with it. When somebody says they saw something, we write that off, don't we? We write it off. And then if you saw something, you don't say anything to anybody. You just keep it to yourself in a sense of conditioning. But as a Christ follower, what do we know? Well, we know that the word of God is the absolute truth. You see, what's beautiful about this is if you don't know the word of God, you are going to fall for the message that people are going to be announcing and some of those messages have already been put in print and I'll show them to you next week I don't think we'll have the time I've got some we'll see we'll see how far we go but it's quite remarkable that these are who are saying yes I, I'm a U.S. Air Force uh, uh, yeah pilot but a certain rank I forget what he was but he's saying this is the conversation that took place and then the commentator, by the way, makes the statement based upon what the Air Force uh, captain is, is saying that it's highly religious material. Listen to what is being said. You say, what do you mean by this? We've gone beyond the UFO alien thing. That's not the topic anymore. You're going to see this. It's not, that's not the topic. Well, what could possibly be more fantastic than that? When they start saying, this now explains everything. You see, when the Christian knows the word of God, when somebody comes along and says, this now has been an ancient revelation that has been given to us and it explains the Bible perfectly and it is this, that Jesus was an alien. That when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration and he turned glowing bright light, you see how many people throughout history have said that when they encountered an alien, they were brilliant in light or this, that, or the other thing. There's always light involved. And when Moses and Elijah appeared, they appeared to be Moses and Elijah to the disciples, written in the Gospels. But in reality, and you see what happens is, listen, people fill in their interpretation. And it's slanted. And if somebody has the slightest door of doubt open in the validity of the scriptures, that kind of stuff can creep in. And this is ancient. It's been around a long time. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it, there Paul warns the Corinthians, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. I'd like to submit to you that we are ignorant of his devices. A lot of people laugh when you mention the word Lucifer or Satan. You don't believe in a real devil, do you? Yes, I do, because Jesus did. Yes, I do, because he's recorded in the Bible as an actual fact. He's a fallen angel, the Bible says. He's a created being, which, by the way, keep that in mind. He's a created being. The authorities that are out there today changing the narrative of the revelations of these creatures are telling us that all of these things that exist, which is why you find them in Babylonian art and Egyptian art, all the way through to Mayan art, Quetzalcoatl and some of these images, all the way through to American Indian uh, cave uh, art. They all display the same thing. Why? Listen, why? They're saying what we're trying to tell all of you about is that it predates the Bible. You see the convenience to this? The moment somebody, listen, young people, the moment somebody comes along and says convincingly, oh, we have found so much information that predates the Bible. The moment you predate the Bible, which means you are predating Genesis 1-1. And that's exactly what they wound up doing. They wound up announcing that Genesis 1-1 did in fact take place because those beings were sent here in this region of the realm of space to create this world 
And that was one particular God at that particular time. And then Jesus is also a particular God for a particular time. For some of you who have been involved in a particular cult that I will mention next week because I'm going to read something from that, you're starting to wake up and say, wait a minute. I was taught that there are a bunch of gods from other planets. You know, this is a very famous cult. You know what I'm talking about? They used to use bicycles, but now they use cars. And Jesus happens to be a God. And Adam was a God. You can become one too. And that's exactly what some of these, I call them New Agers, but that's not even fair to the New Age uh, people. Uh, this is what is being talked about and discussed. I, Lisa asked me, why are you doing this message? And the reason why is, I, I listened to too many pastors online. I was searching this, and there were pastors throughout the world saying, all of this alien manifestation, it's wrong for us to call them aliens. These are people, or not people, these are entities that God has created, but they didn't fall like we did. They've come to help us. <laughs> when you hear stuff like that, we better address it. <laughs> I mean, seriously. The Bible says that there'd be an increase in demonic activity and spiritism in the last days. 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse 3. For the time will come, I say it's here, when they will not endure sound doctrine. People don't want to hear Bible studies. Entertain me. Make me happy. Make me feel good. Give me a warm and fuzzy. Don't, let, don't, don't bore me with Bible doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they're looking for a thrill. I want a religious thrill. They will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth, and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Notice the difference. The world... And the religious world is going to go after some new thing, fables. But the believer is to be watchful. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Are you guys all right? Yes. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we do not wrestle, we do not war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Note where they're at in the heavenly places or atmosphere that is a verse that we probably all should start memorizing we do not we are not wrestling against we are not warring right now in the 21st century today we are not warring against human powers the bible says we are warring against principalities and powers that are of a different origin are you jack are you saying they're aliens no i'm telling you they're demons they're fallen angels and demons and even now, with some of the things that we're going to hear, where you've got a Navy aviator saying, I don't know what these things are, but they have the ability to appear and disappear outside of our known realm of physics. Someone's going to say, if they were visiting from some other galaxy, because you know that used to be the story, that they got in a spaceship and they flew here. But now we have the technology to pick up an asteroid that's millions of miles away and be able to plot its size and its direction and its speed, and yet these things are not detected. Why? Because now the world and the unbeliever, I'll say, is now announcing this. We used to think they were coming from other areas this way, on a, on a longitude latitude, based on our physics. Listen, everybody, all this has come out prominently in the last few weeks. We no longer believe that they were traveling from some spot to this spot by our traditional way of thinking. What they do is they live in a different realm that some people would say is spiritual, but they live in a dimension that we've not yet discovered. And what they can do is step 
in to where we're at and then step out. Which, by the way, in physics is actually a discipline. It's actually a study. What I suggest to you today is the things that you're going to be hearing and the increasing claims that are going to be coming out is none other than demonic, deceiving actions that are stepping in, being made visible, and when they want, they step aside. Be it a, 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 an alien-looking thing, be it a craft, be it a uh, what they call, you'll see, uh, the, the Tic Tac, which was a, a spacecraft that looks like a big Tic Tac, but it appears and then disappears off of radar. What did it do? It did spiritual stuff. That's what it did. Because if it did any other type of physics, we would have been able to track it. It appears and disappears. What do we know for sure? We know that God's word is true. The Bible announces it. God's word is powerful. It's active in our lives. And God's word tells us about deceiving activity in the last days that we better be familiar with. Because if you're not, you're going to hear something that's going to get you excited and you just might fall for it. Next slide, uh, Congressman Matt Gates. 